Hello everybody, my name is Monty. I'm here with John. He's an expert in the Korean mobile market. And uh, just, John, tell me a little bit what you do here in Korea and about your expertise. Hello everyone. My name is John Rajeski. I'm currently handling business for Asia Pacific with my company. We have a mobile concern out of the valley. It's called Talk Plus. It's a, the ability for you to have virtual numbers on your handset from any location in the world. That being said, I'm currently based in Seoul and I'm happy to be here today. So my role is handling business for my company in Asia, but more importantly, you had some questions, so I'll let you hold the floor yeah. again. So actually, um, what we realized here during the trend tool we did is that um, there's a massive supply of bandwidth. First of all, at home, Absolutely. and secondly, on the go. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, currently with my broadband connection in Seoul, I get dedicated 100 megabits per second, 24-7, for roughly 35 US dollars per month. And it's the case where the network is reliable, I don't have downtime or any type of blackouts, and it's just fantastic for data access. That's in my home space. When I'm on the go, if I need access to the World Wide Web, Korea in the downtown area, as well as the whole of Seoul, has three megabits per second Y Pro or Y Max, as we would call it, access for internet access or connectivity issues, be it with your PDA and or your laptop. That's great. So, and there's also a lot of live coverage going on. So there is, uh, like, uh, user-generated content websites like Oh My News, we just visited them t today, and they are um, also doing live video broadcasting via these networks. So, uh, do you have any experience about that? Yeah, it's really quite impressive stuff. The citizen reporting or the influence of the Koreans on the media is not only clearly desired here in Korea for Koreans themselves, but something that they're actively participating in. For example, for video uploads to the Psy World, as we learned, 100,000 per day, phenomenal amounts of data. There's about a terabyte of data every three days being uploaded to that site itself. Amazing. Everybody's wire enabled, and it's not just a matter of talking about it. The devices themselves are really personal managers for their own portability in whatever area that they're using them. It's wow. fantastic. Amazing. Huh? So, Tell us a little bit about one or two really cool topics which is going on, like trend or an innovation here in Seoul, Korea. Okay. Well, I think Seoul is leading in many places in the world, including the whole of Asia. And one area I think is really hot right now is the personal beacon locators, which we would call LBS in the West, regarding consumers with their handsets getting information that they want based on profiles that they're setting up. Traditionally, this has been known in the dating area with little abilities to set profiles and get avatars with people with mutual interests, but this is much more broad than that. This is tracking pizza delivery, doing transactions online, finding out when credits are being debited to So you account. can actually track your pizza? Yes, you can right. track your pizza, absolutely. That's cool. And you can see the delivery as far as the time frame, where the person's at, and doing things where, again, most of the Korean access is on the go to the World Wide Web through their mobile handset. Of course, they have the broadband access at home, but it's really impressive stuff. And unfortunately, we don't have enough time to cover it today here, but I'm happy to preview some of it. Great. So I would love to test it, like ordering a pizza on my mobile and then tracking it. Probably. Yeah, that's great. That's cool. And the other thing I think that's going to be really hot in Asia is the virtual numbers where there's a lot of VoIP players that are allowing VoIP but not VoIP on the network, actual PSTN, circuit switch grade access to where if I'm based in Seoul but I travel to Tokyo or Singapore, I can have a handset where I have a number in each location, but if someone rings me on that number, they get local charges and it rings on my handset independent of where I'm at with all, all of the charges that happen because of international access and the costs that are still very prohibitive in Asia themselves. Cool. So, yeah, we are saying goodbye, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll link to John's email uh, address and also website. Yeah, it's, you have a great blog. Yeah, it's rajeski.com. That's rajeski.com. Look forward to your visit. Thanks for your time. Come to Asia. There's a lot going on here. Okay. Come to meet up. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.